name is David, and I'm one of the national campaign coordinators for the Real Food Challenge. So I have the great privilege of working with amazing student groups all around the country who are starting to take action on this issue, learning about it like everyone in this class. So thank you. Right. Um, so, so I think we all know that food systems are pretty complex. Uh, when it comes to everything from the seed manufacturers, the shipper packers, the distributors, the retailers. It's a, it's a long chain. Right? We found that of, of the whole food system, the part of it that is healthy, fair, green, and affordable, the sort of alternative food system that uh, Kristen was, was trying to cultivate, that's actually less than 2% of our total food spending in this country. So, for the 98% that's out there, this is a lot of what they have to contend with. In the middle, I want to put our farmer. And this could be Kristen, it could be uh, the large citrus growers, tomato growers in Florida, where these farm workers work. And this farmer has, has a lot to contend with. On one side, we've got our input costs. Right? Any, any farmer has to deal with this. So can, can I go name for me what uh, a standard input you might have to go into your farm operation would be? I heard seeds back there. Yeah. Water. Water, OK. Land. Fuel, land. Equipment. Equipment, OK. Did I hear any other? Fertilizer, maybe? So uh, who, who do we know that is a, a big seller of seeds out there? Monsanto. Monsanto, that's nice. Yeah, OK. We got Monsanto. Um, someone mentioned tractors or equipment. Who sells tractors or equipment? John Deere. John Deere. Okay. Um, and and fertilizer. Does anyone know where another company that comes from? Yeah. What was that? Dow. Dow. That's a great one. Another one's Cargill. Right. Okay, Dow. We got Cargill. All right. So already we can see that this farmer is sort of up against a, a nice rock here. <laughs> For major food corporations or agribusiness corporations um, that control a really significant uh, portion of their market. So you know, this farmer can't go to John Deere and ask to you know, get a bargain on the tractor this year. It doesn't work like that. Uh, they're, they're kind of stuck. <laughs> on the other side, we've got an equally powerful uh, set of players. But these are the, the buyers. The folks who set prices. Who do you know that is a giant buyer of food in this country? Do you know the largest? Walmart. Walmart is actually the biggest guy. Yeah. Uh, biggest purchaser of food in this country. Okay, we've got Walmart. Any others? Someone's at McDonald's. I'll just do that. It's called Narches. Um, any others? Has anybody heard of Sodexo? Or Aramark, Compass Group. Have you heard those names before? Uh, so you see some head nodding. These companies um, are food service companies. I'll write Aramark there, just to give you a sense. Uh, these are food service companies that run uh, cafeterias at K through 12, at hospitals, at colleges and universities. Uh, these are also huge purchasers of food. So these are the forces we've got coming at this farmer. I'll draw these arrows here. And this is why we call it the big squeeze. The farmer can't negotiate on the inputs that they have to bring into their operation. And what's sad is that the same is true of prices. McDonald's sets the price. When they put out a contract for potatoes, they tell you how many, what size, what color, what shape. And they tell you how much they want it for. That's who controls the market. The same goes for these so other big buyers. Puts a, puts a tough, uh, tough bargain in front of this farmer. So what do we think happens to the average grower in this situation? Let me shout it out. Get squeezed out. Squeezed out. So, so one option is they're just out of business, right? This farmer lady is gone. But if they choose to stay in the game, what might else happen to their operation? One thing is 
they realize, geez, they need to uh, start growing more. I mean, maybe if they, they purchased, if they sold more and more, they might be able to squeeze by. Right? So we have intensification. So people dropping more and more fertilizer, planting uh, more and more of the same thing in the same place. What else might happen? Yeah, there it is. Someone over here. Debt. Debt? Yep. Yeah, I saw him. Yep. They get bought out by their house. They, they get bought out. Yeah. I mean, other things that can also happen are that they degrade the quality of their food. That instead of producing corn to eat, they produce corn for corn syrup as a way to add value to their product. Right? So what we're seeing is that because, this is a mess of a diagram here, but because of the, the forces of, of the big buyers and the big input suppliers, we've got a food system where more and more farmers are being forced to out of business, are being forced to sell out to larger competitors, or if they do stay in, their stewardship practices go south, they go into debt, and another thing that wasn't mentioned is they squeeze the other resources they have available to them, labor. So maybe they start paying their workers less. So this is, this is I mean, a sad story of American agriculture, but it's, it's the, the reality that we've been living with for quite a long time.